I think it is so because in Africa, our culture has been pictured to us in a such a way that when you go to school and you do something wrong, you are being asked to go to the farm, we do something agriculture-wise. But I think that is totally wrong because agriculture, which is our main source of income for Africa, and even you come to Ghana here, that is our main source of income. And I think it should be very, very attractive to us. We should make it sexy for the youth to enter, for everybody to enter, because that perception is actually deceiving to us. I was shocked when I heard people talking about this fertilizers and how effective it is, how it has helped a lot of farmers. And I was asking myself, who are those behind this fertilizer? Who are they? That is my mission today. Let's go and find out. Aisha, you know I've heard a lot about you. Today, I want to know something about you. Just tell me something small about you. Okay, so Aisha is uh, a student at the University of Cape Coast and reading agriculture economies. I'm also a co-founder of Jazz Grow Company Limited and also the marketing lead for the company. The Jazz Grow, we are into the production of uh, dual purpose climate smart technology, which is organic, and that product serves as a fertilizer and a pesticide. It has a soil amendment benefits. Something should have triggered you to start this particular journey. What was that? So for us to come up with that idea, it was actually a motivation we took from somewhere. And it was something from my auntie. My auntie, Amina, is a farmer. She's actually into the tomato farming. And then one of her problems she was facing is that she was not able to meet uh, her yield. So it means she's actually making costs or incurring costs instead of getting profits. And she's a mother. She has children. She has to feed them. She's not able to take them to school as well because of this challenge. All this while she has been depending on her farm but unfortunately this has been a major problem for eating here so i had to think about it and then i was an economic student at the university of cape coast so i wanted to take an opportunity to actually work on it but i didn't know how to do it then i came back to do my mfo in agriculture economics i met some amazing people i talked to them about this challenge and then we decided to do something on it and then we did our research and realized that oh we can work on fertilizer we can actually produce fertilizer by uh, recycling organic waste into a fertilizer and then we decided okay if you are doing it i don't think it's only anti i mean i always facing this challenge we have to ask other people so we did our market research and realized that about 80 to 90 percent of farmers in sub-saharan africa here are actually facing these same challenges they are facing the challenge with fertilizer and pesticide and because of the climate change even our soil is kind of uh, lacking in nutrients so we have to do something so that's why we, our product is not just a fertilizer it has a pesticide component and also the soil amendments components the moment how many are you in numbers on this project okay so co-founders we are four we have justice we have abdul muiz Otu. We have Suleiman and Mohammed and myself, Aisha Amin. Uh, we have board members. We have Professor uh, Van der Poy. She's OE, uh, the soil scientist at the University of Cape Coast. Uh, I think she's the head of the soil science. The name of your company is Jazz Crew. Yes. Why the name Jazz Crew? There, there are lots of names outside there, but then you chose to take Jazz Crew. Yeah. Why Jazz Crew? Okay, so Jazz Crew actually uh, resonates with the what we want to sell out there. Uh, the aim for us is that when the farmers, they are going through their challenges and they get our products and they use it, it will just grow and then they will meet their yields, right? <laughs> so that is our major aim. But at the same time, it also resonates with us because uh, one of our co-founders, his name is ja uh, Justice, okay. which starts with J, Amaisha <laughs> A, Abdul is also A, and then Suleiman, who is also uh, X. So it was jazz, and then we added a grow because we wanted everything to grow. So that was it. This is just amazing. Wow. Just use my <laughs> Wow. It's really amazing. Okay. So here, what do you specifically do here? We want to go inside and see what you do. I don't know. I saw something like charcoal here, but then I don't know. Okay. If you can tell me, what is it about? Okay. 
So this is our production center. Okay, actually, this is our old production center. We've actually acquired a new place. That's where we are using our technologies and everything. So at first, when we started, like I mentioned, we are students. So we had to start it from the basis that is using the manual way. And with the manual way, this is where we started it. So with the technical aspects of it, I'm the marketing lead. I would like to invite our production lead to talk more about this and then you you get to know what we do here. Suleiman. Okay, Mr. Suleiman. What is your work here? Like, what do you do here? Yeah, so here is the production site. And you can see there are raw materials and also finished product that are to be me uh, measured and mixed to produce our final product. Yeah, so in, right in front of you is a charcoal. Okay. That's how I, I will put it to the layman's understanding, understanding but it's not, it, it's not a charcoal. It's a pyrolyzed uh, coconut husk and we believe that the prolonged use of inorganic fertilizer has caused effects negatively onto the soil and further use of organic products to enhance the soil fertility is not likely to work and this is not from my perspective there's an engagement and research that has proven to the fact that if you continue to use inorganic fertilizer for long Gradually, when you, the soil begins to lose its fertility and you try to revitalize it, it is not going to work. So through our research, we are able to find out that, yes, if we, uh, we do something like this, it's rather going to revitalize the soil and even bring it to the normal state. Like It has not been exposed to inorganic product before. So that leads to this one. Okay, that's fine. So this one is a mixture of what? Like, I don't know. Yeah, so it's a mixture of both coconut husk, empty food punch, which are known to be waste after they have been, after it has been used. So Jasgo is interested in helping smallholder farmers to increase their yield. And in the way, we also look forward to improve our environmental and also sanitation. So in Central Region, we believe that Palm and coconut are the most cultivated crops, and we harness these raw materials to produce what we, you are seeing here. That's good. That's fantastic. So, who is your targeted audience, if I may ask? Yeah, so we are looking forward to working with smallholder farmers who are into the vegetable farming and also cash crop farmers. How much do you sell your fertilizers? Okay, so uh, for our research, so we did re research. Like I mentioned, we want to able to satisfy the smallholder farmers okay. and even those into the commercial farming. So for our 30 kg, we had to sell it for 35, uh, 65 Ghana cities, 65 Ghana cities, which is around uh, about. It's not up to ten dollars. Yeah, it's not up to, but it says uh, sixty-five Ghana cities for the thirty kg, and with that you are getting a fertilizer and a pesticide, and there's also a soil amender because it's all merged together as one product. Wow. Okay. Are you open for investment? Oh yes. Yeah. So we actually started on our own as students, and we had to contribute something together, and then we went out, and then. Alhamdulillah, we got uh, KIC and they gave us some seed fund. But that one has been able to secure us some place where we are doing our commercial production at the moment. But we need some materials like the inorganic digesters, some machines and other things to actually speed the process. Because like my production lead actually mentioned, we are receiving a lot of orders, but we are not able to meet it. This tells you the problems that smallholder farmers are actually facing. And it's not just Ghana that we are uh, receiving these orders. Even from our neighboring countries, they are all calling in to order from us. They know the importance of organic farming. But unfortunately, we are not able to meet these demands, which calls for the need or the urgency of this problem. So we, we are actually looking for investors. Anyone who is ready and is willing to join us to make the impact in the agriculture sector is welcome. We have our papers, we have everything ready, and we are willing to collaborate with anyone who will come. Thank you. Please, they are ready to collaborate. Come on. We are begging you, please come. <laughs> Uh, 
um, Abdul Moiz Otu, the, um, the operations and technical manager at Jazz Girl Limited Company. So please, what's your work exactly? I want to know. All right. So um, I basically um, oversee all of the operations that are um, happening over here. Um, we're going to acquire raw materials. Um, we putting things in place. How we move things from one state to the other. The sorting of raw materials. Um, the um, you know we need to cut at some point for the decomposition to get better and finer from time to time. Yeah, so we monitor all of those things and I'm in charge over here. So how many days does it take for your raw material, uh, your fertilizer to be a fertilizer? I don't know. Um, the natural way, it takes about uh, three months to uh, to go through that whole process. But uh, we are using other ways uh, to reduce that time because uh, we realize that we can't keep the farmers waiting for that long. Okay, So we need to find a way to reduce that time from three months to one month. That's that's the technology we are adding to how to make the organic compost. Yeah. So since you've started this um, production, have you gotten customers so far? And how is their feedback? All right, so with customers here, yeah, we have customers. You know, with, um, with the information we have put out there, the farmers have gotten to know that the use of inorganic fertilizer is really not good. So they are really transforming to the thought of using the organic fertilizer. And now, uh, as we are speaking now, we have we have orders that we are not even able to meet due to um, our limited production um, capacity. So we are finding ways to um, have larger production capacity, which is why we have acquired um, a larger space where we will be producing more to meets the demand of these farmers. We have farmers that we are working with and um, so far the feedback is really good. Yeah, they like our product. Okay. Five years to come. Where do you want to see this organization? All right. So um, actually when it comes to Jazz Grow, we are very um, keen about helping the smallholder farmers okay, and making an impact in their life. And not just the farmers, um, soil quality and also um, food quality, the food that we we grow on our farms and all of that. So we are looking forward to producing quality organic fertilizer for these farmers to use on their farms and then also impact their life um, in a sense that we will help them increase their yield by up to 50%. That is what our product is giving them and that will translate into more income for them and then it will help these farmers. Also, we are litigating the use of um, um, inorganic fertilizers, yeah. So we are helping bring back the the organic farming that we used to do at some point. People have this perception that agriculture is for the poor. What do you have to say about that? Do you believe agriculture is for the poor? Okay, so I think it is so because. In Africa, agriculture has been pictured to us in a such a way that when you go to school and you do something wrong, you are being asked to go to the farm, we do something agriculture-wise. But I think that is totally wrong because agriculture, which is our main source of income for Africa and even you come to Ghana here, that is our main source of income. And I think it should be very, very attractive to us. We should make it sexy for the youth to enter, for everybody to enter because that perception is actually deceiving to us. And people don't even know that when agriculture is actually reserved for the rich. They don't know. It's actually reserved for the rich. If you do your research, you realize that almost 90% of all the rich people in Ghana are, one way or the other, investing in agriculture because they know what it means to us. They know that we can't survive without food. And anything that is a necessity to us as a human being means that that is where you will get your money from because you can't do away with it. It's something like air. You can't do away with air. So people have to buy or have, have to purchase oxygen when they are fa uh, facing some issues. The same way you can't do away with food. So it should be something that I think we should make it attractive to the youth because youth, we are the resources, we are the everything. And we have the knowledge, we have the skills, we have the technological mind and we can make the uh, agriculture sector more attractive. We can actually leverage on the resources we have and solve the challenges that we are facing in the agriculture sector. So I will, I will actually 
motivate the youth. If you really want to make money or if you really want to make any impact, then I think that your culture success is the best for you. And you are welcome because this is the resources for us in Africa. Wow, 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 wow. Do you get volunteers coming in to support? Yeah, so when you come to Jazz Rule, we have the impact section. The main purpose of the pro- uh, of our project is actually give back to the society. So we have volunteers that we are working with, and we keep we are still accepting volunteers. We have over 70 students from the University of Peoples that are volunteering with us. And what we do is that we train them on how to do this uh, composting, recycling, organic waste to reduce the waste we have in the economy, and also at least to get some entrepreneurial skills. So when they go out, they will not become like unemployed. Like it, it's actually a problem. In Ghana. So we are training volunteers actually and we are even accepting more. But we are more concerned about the ladies because ladies, it looks like they are more retarded. When you come to Jazz Row, I think uh, when you come to the front line, it's only me and Prof. Van der Foy. The female volunteers are few, but we have a lot of male volunteers. So we want even more females because we are much more concerned about them. We want to bridge the gap between the males and the females. Yeah, thank you. They want more volunteers, especially females. Please come. Come. You see, Alkosha is not for the poor. It's for the rich people. It's for the rich. We reach you. Where do we find you? Okay, so you can Google us. You just search for Jazz Grow Company Limited. Uh, J-A-A-S-G-R-O-W. Then Limited Company. So let me spell again. J-A-A-S-G-R-O-W then limited company so it's not a normal just that is j-u-s it's j-a-a-s thank you so you can google us and you can visit us on all our social media platforms you can visit all the social media platforms as jazz grow ltd so j-a-s-g-r-o-l-t-d uh, for all the social media platforms and if you want to make orders you can make orders on our websites or you can call us on 0249-567921 0249-567921 we are always available and we are looking forward to working with you or, or supplying you or helping you to solve the challenges you are facing thank you so okay so when you come to our campaign when we say jazz grow we say that's the farmer's choice so jazz grow the, the farmer's, farmer's choice. choice thank you jazz grow the, the farmer's, farmer's choice, choice. In fact, the farmer's choice, indeed. Jazz grow. The farmer's choice. Jazz grow. The farmer's choice. The farmer's choice.